Hey, hello, I'm Kathy Freeman with Kathy Freeman Art, and I am glad to be here, excited to be here in this evening to share with you a little demonstration as I work in my art journal. So come along, watch. I hope that this inspires you to get out your art supplies and just doodle or do something with it. Um, you know, sometimes when I don't know what to do, I'll just grab it and, um, I mean, that is a challenge to try to figure out what am I going to do with this. But if you just start getting some paint on that page or some color on that page, just start with something. Just get some color on that page. And then once you start doing that, your mind starts, it's like it just opens up the light or turns on the switch or something, and you can kind of move forward from there. All right, let me go ahead and turn down the camera so that you can watch me as I start creating this project. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section and go ahead and uh, give me, post your name and where you're from so that I can say hello to you. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna show you the watercolors that I have. Um, I've got a couple different sets. I've been asked this question before, what's the little packet? I, the little packet I have is by, can you see that? There we go. Prima. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but it does not come with this many watercolors. <laughs> I have several different packs, and what I did is I took from one and filled with the other, because I it, it comes with a row here and a row here, and then it's this open space. But these are more of my brights, you might say. And then I've got uh, the browns and the golds and the this this feel in here. So depending on what type of uh, I'm painting, then I know which you know which one to pack. Now this one is a, a wonderful wonderful case. It's great for travel and everything. Um, and it's by this brand right here. Let's see that? There we go. Uh, cute nice the only thing is i've noticed that the paints are a little different this one uh when you're buying for those of you now i'm uh let me stop here and just tell you that i'm do not claim to be the watercolor expert on this and so in my group i don't focus on watercolor i use watercolor to just to play with and to enhance maybe a project I'm working on. I love, love, love the flow of watercolor. So I use it, but I don't primarily start teaching the uh, rules and techniques and the ins and outs to my members. Uh, we just use it for, you know, for the fun and what it, what it actually can create the, the, um, the style in that that it creates so but something very important to know is when you're purchasing watercolors and you're getting the lesser the the not so expensive there's uh chalk in that pigment okay and the ones that are more expensive do not have that you've got more pigment and so it takes less to use as far as watercolors and so i've noticed that when i've used these two and um, this is not a product review here, <laughs> but this one to me feels when I work with it as if it has a little more of that chalk. So to get a vibrant, a really intense, bright color, then I find that I need to put more layers on than if I use this. And of course, watercolor is all about adding the layers. So there's nothing wrong in that. Okay, now the next thing too, as I'm working on my little project here, is typically with watercolors, you would want to tape down the paper. But I just freehand sketched this little flower here that I'm gonna play with. And I've wanted the leaves to come off, the stem to come off the paper. So I don't want a white, a white ridge right there. So I've taped all around. That's why this looks a little odd as far as my taping job. But typically you would tape around your watercolor paper to get that paper to stay. Cause once you start adding the, the water, the paper wants to roll. All right, so those are my little tips to start with. Now, I'm just gonna have some fun. Start creating something for my um, journal page. I'm gonna use round tips for this project and I'm gonna pull out a few here so I have them ready to go. This is my super large. Well, it's not super large, but it's my larger. 
one right there. I'll use that one instead. <laughs> Alrighty. Got my water. I've got my brush. I need to have a piece of paper towel or some kind of a towel to absorb to work with. And I've got my pigment. So I am ready to start this. Let me move some of my other things off here. <laughs> All right. Let's see, we start here. We'll start with a. This is my interpretation. I don't even know the name of that flower, but. And step right in here to the purples and I'm going to use my plate to put that on. I'm going to do just a light coat of this. Around here. And I'm doing what that's what I'm doing right there is a wet on dry. Wet on wet is to wet the paper. For those of you not familiar with watercolor, you wet the paper and then apply the pigment to that. So there we go. I've got that, and I'll be coming back and putting layers on it. But you see, I've got a very light light going on there. I'm going to come over here to this magenta color. Let's just add some of that. And if you don't want it to flow into another area, now you can see, I want to show you the difference. So I went straight from my uh, little color swatch here. I'm going to use a magenta in this one. So I'll load my brush. See the difference there? It, you, the intensity of the colors. Now this is still wet up here, so I want it to dry a little bit. I don't want it to just bleed over into that one completely yet. Move up here. Let's just do a little up in here. Back to my put another layer of this down. We're just playing back and forth here. So let's find my purples in this. I think this is it right here. It's pretty dark. It's got a lot more blue to it on that. And it add 
it right up here and let that flow. whole goal of my project here is just for fun and relaxation. So, go back to this purple here. I don't want lines, so I'm going to come in with some water. Blend that out. The thing I love about watercolor too is if you could get some down and you don't want it there, you can take a clean brush, clean brush, a little wet, and you can go over it and pull it up. Like it's blending over here. Maybe a little late, it might have already saturated it. Let's see. We can work it. Okay. Now I need a really pretty blue. This one. Gonna let this just flow down. And a really pretty yellow-green. I love using this palette over here. Just playing with color. Adding layers. Letting it flow back and forth. So I can kind of manipulate it like that, see? Move around. I love how that's blending together right in there. Okay, I'm going to let that sit and dry and I'm going to go work over this other area. Let's see, let's pull in my colors here. Let's use this one. Grab some of that. Okay, I'm going to leave that because that's going to dry. Love that, love that. All right, I've got this petal over here. I've got a petal here. I'm going to come down here with this color.
that too. Um, <laughs> go to this a little more of a red. And pull out that same green. Let's add that right in here. It comes, it's, it's like a lime green, but when you apply it, it looks yellow. Okay, let's see. Pretty bright green. Let's do an orange yellow up here. Dip into my orange. Just fun to watch the colors. Just play in the color. Very whimsical. And a green. green there and this color over here I've got another over here let's bring that up with the blue go back to my Grab that. What blue did I use? It's over here. Some more of this purple okay so what am I doing for those that are just kind of joining in I'm just playing playing with my watercolors working on a project for my art journal just for the fun of it and my only goal is to watch and enjoy how the colors are flowing together. This is going to be a very unusual flower the way it's turning out. <laughs> but 
but it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see. To work with. Let's see about this. My goal tonight, my goal is just to encourage you to pull out your watercolors. If you don't have any, you might consider getting some because just to play with watercolors is very relaxing once you let go of um, Now I hit that edge, which caused that color to bleed out there. So, and you just, I'm working with it. So what I'm going to do is bring my flower out a little further and I'm going to let that migrate out that way. And I'm going to bring this out. What color did I use here? This green. I'm going to bring this out a little further, too. Just for balance. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's add some more color down in here. A little more vibrant. Go back to my blue. Just let it flow back and forth. I don't have, I do like the sharper edges around. And this one is just muddying itself out. So I'm going to give it a minute to dry. Actually, I'm going to hurry it along. Okay, let's just play with this green for the fun of it. Over the top of that. That's dry up there, so I'm going to take the blue and I'm kind of outlining it. it appears. What I'm going to do now is add water to this edge of it. Let that blue migrate in towards. The inside of this petal. I'm going to add some of this yellow green to this.
Okay, mix this right over this green. Okay, that was just kind of a happy accident right there, but I like what it's doing. And it's creating a, a, some texture with the color. Let's move over and do something similar to that on this side. So I'm gonna pull in more of that magenta. You know, I'm not liking what that's happening there, so look at me change it in mid-form. <laughs> that's what's the beauty. Just play with it, okay? Let's have this go out here a little bit more. One thing to be aware of is complements will create brown. So be aware of the complements that you're using. You don't mix them in together. So obviously orange and the complement of orange, the complement of this yellow. Don't, if you start mixing them, you will start noticing that you're creating um, almost a brownie mud color. If that's the intent you want, that's perfect. Let's give this little roughly edges. Go back to my orange. I just started noticing that when I put the orange in with this green. to make sure that all the blue is out of my brush. Now, got a lot of color on top of that. I'm gonna let that sit and dry, just like that. <laughs> take all right let's see grab some of this color I'm gonna just create these little I don't know what you call that. Steams, the little that come out of the flower. I need that to be dry before I go pull that down there too much. That really should be the last thing you do, but I moved into it a little bit faster. Look how wonderful that is. It's just blending out into it. Let's add a little more. Let it do its thing. Oh, I love it. Okay, I am quite happy with what's going on there. I'm gonna walk away from that and start working on my stem down here and the leaves. So, let me see. See how fun watercolor is? You just, if you don't like a color and you recognize it pretty quickly that you don't like the color, you can pull it back up. Like I showed you, just wash off your Clean paintbrush. Clean it out, wet it, and add a little water to it, and then go back in, and that should pull up.
put a little of this green down here. Well, I've got it in my brush. Just put a little layer of it. Okay, I'm going to come back with <laughs> Let's go for this green. Way over here, you probably can't see it. Oh, that's a pretty... If you're not sure what the color is going to be before you put it down, I don't, I just, I'm never working on anything that I'm too concerned with as far as it has to be a certain perfect color. But if that is the case for you, make a little swatch on a piece of paper. Make sure that's the color that you would want. Before you lay it down. Now I'm going to leave this white. I want to leave this white in this, I think. May end up co covering it, but usually to have white stay on, you mask it, you put a masking over, then you can take that masking off. Back in the day, I was taking my classes, we used um, rubber cement. But I don't see rubber cement so much. And there is a commercial masking that you can get now. That's specifically for this. And rubber cement does have some fumes, so maybe they took it off the market. I mean, you, I can find it, but it's not as prevalent as it was back in the day. <laughs> Are any of you old enough to remember rubber cement? <laughs> Go ahead and bring that on in there. I'll do that. All right. Let's go for a little... Um, let's try this color. I kind of... Like a little brown on the tips. And all that, I'm going to go for a really dark, let's see, green. You start doing the layers. Moving that color around. I always kind of cringe when I'm doing these lives because <laughs> I know there are professional watercolors out there and they're like, ah, no, you don't do it that way. <laughs> uh, but as I said in the beginning, I'm just playing, not teaching you professionally how to do watercolors. reason I love them is that ability to, oh, I love the textures that this creates when it dries and it leaves those. I love, 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 love that. Just play with it. Let it be wonky. Let it be, you know, imperfect.
Okay, I'm kind of satisfied with what's happening there. Let's see. Maybe a little more on this one of a just to give that those dark areas. See, as that dries, it'll leave that beautiful. So I'm really speaking to you out there who just want to play and not worry about it being perfect. Okay, isn't that fun? Look at that. Okay, and it's not through playing. I just love it. Let's go back in here. Really want to make sure. Make sure your brush is, is really good and clean. I hope mine was. Because I'm moving from a red family, a green family to a red family, which those are compliments. So that would create that mud. I'm going to put another layer there on that. my palettes this one is used up quite a bit you can, it's one of my favorite colors to use I'm truly a magenta person put a little of it up here Let's see. Test my color there because I wasn't sure. I just dropped that and look how beautifully it took off. Letting it flow. Can come back in here with where's that purple? I'm gonna stay away from that area right there because I'm not one I want to keep the Differentiation. The separation. That's the really the word I'm looking for is separation. Oh, but can you see how fun it is? You just play with it and add another layer on top of it. Have I convinced you yet to pull out your watercolors? I'm going to dry that before I always stop and give it a minute to kind of dry. You could walk away from it and leave it and come back to it later in the day or the next day if you want or just grab the dryer.
Okay, I finished drying that. I love it. This is so fun. Now the paper, the tape, the heat started having that come up. And it started to pop up a little bit. Okay. I can do another one of these out this direction or just leave. <laughs> I don't know, but let me get my... It's dry enough right now. So I'm going to get my Micron. And I'm going to do some line work on it. Use an O2. You should use the O5s or the old ones. Also, the uh, Jelly Roll. Number eight. I like tens. Where's my ten? There it is. <laughs> Let's put a little eight. Eight gets forgotten. Don't like to use it too often. Let's add just a little texture in here. I'm going to use the eight first because it's going to be fine. Then I can come back with the larger one. Go, that was an eight. Let's go now to the ten and I'm not going to hit every single one, but just to give it a little variety. Now I'll have to lift that up because you can't really see it on camera. See that? Just to give it. Ooh, love it. Okay, now line work here. This adds the contrast. Little swirly lines down in here. Do another one right here. And just going to kind of tap around, not trying to create a full circle in there, but I do want the contrast. Wiggle around so that it makes it recede a little bit. And if you get it too dark, then you can lighten it up a little. Um, I'm not going to Let's see. This is a permanent, so I don't know that it will come up. Go down here. 
do outline our stem though and our leaves now I'm not I'm, I'm not hitting all of it just very light random So, okay. There we go. This is the second time. Make that a little darker on that edge over there. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little line work on this. Emphasizing. Where those petals And the line work doesn't have to go right along the edge either. It can be out away from, move itself around. For example, like so. Okay. All right. Perfect. I'm loving this. I hope you've got your watercolors out and you're just playing. One thing I do tell my art sisters in there is we talk a lot about line work. Um, I, I'm always talking about it when I'm doing my projects. How to create interest with your line because piece needs variety. It needs a little interest going on. So that it pops off the page. Let me go back here, grab my white, and let's bring this back in. There. That was a little too dark for me, so I just went back in with my white. Took care of that. Didn't know what it was going to actually do, but you just play with it back and forth. And this is our project. Let's take that tape off. What a fun, fun thing to do. I have to get back out and just do another watercolor with my art sisters. Usually, we, you know, with mixed media, where I'm bringing in lots of different um, papers and different things. But this is fun. 
to just do a watercolor. Okay, where's my, is that my number two again? Nope, that's a one. I'm going to, so let's do this. There. It really actually stopped at where that tape was. So I am getting rid of that illusion of that. Okay. Love, love this. All right. Thanks for joining me tonight. And go to my website and see what I've got. It's at kathyfreemanart.com. If you are interested in being an art sister, I have the... Um, membership that's open for a little while here to welcome in new members and it'll be closing down here this short little while so now's the time to take a look at that and I'll put the link for that in in the um, in the comments if you're listening to this if this is later on uh, when the recording goes back out and I've already closed it get yourself on the waiting list and then you'll be first to know when it opens back up. All right. Thanks for joining me tonight. This is Kathy Freeman with KathyFreemanArt.com. And I will see you again for another Monday Motivation.